We knew very little about the Sony augmented reality prototype presented last year, even if it's already been used in public experiences. But finally, some more details emerged from its creator in a closed door conference at Sony. Hey guys, stay here, so let's discover this thing together, what Sony is working on for this next consumer ready HMD, and of course, what are the problems that they still have to overcome to bring it to the market. So let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, we have to start saying that Sony is no new to the AR and VR ecosystem. They're working on this stuff for more than 15 years, and they really wanted to highlight it in this presentation. At the end, they started with Classatron back in the day, and now we have PlayStation VR, the first consumer-ready VR headset from Sony. I need to take out that. That works on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, and it's gonna work on PlayStation 5 as well. So for sure, very interesting headset. And you can see a little the PSVR footprint in this prototype for an AR headset from Sony. Anyway, this prototype has already been used in a public experience in Japan, in Tokyo, for the Ghostbuster rookie training. And I think that Ghostbusters and Ghosts are really a clever way to show AR and AR capabilities, because there's still a problem with AR, is that the holograms are always a little transparent so you can always see through a little everything looks like a ghosty uh, stuff a ghosty hologram and well if you have ghost that you have to portray it, well that is close to perfection and that's where Sony got in with this experience also owning the Ghostbuster uh, brand but well clever move Sony approved for sure but now let's get to the technical part and let's discover what is particular about this AR headset well to start this is targeted to the outside use so to be used like under the sun and not really in a close and controlled light environment and that makes it very very interesting because usually AR doesn't have very strong displays and it's really hard to see holograms where the light is too bright and well that's something that's gonna change in this one so talking about the display it uses waveguides and micro LED now this is a very interesting technology because micro LED has very high brightness and contrast and is perfect for outside use for example or to have very very, very bright holograms. And it's not the first time that we talk about this stuff on the channel. We already discovered with the HoloLens 2 review that you can check out over here, or also for what is gonna be the next display for the next generation Oculus AR product that is not that far away. So if you like this kind of stuff, well, you are in the right channel, I guess. Now, we don't have any information about the resolution, for example, but in micro LED displays, it's not really that important because the pixels are so close together that actually the screen door effect is not really a big factor. Also, they are able to bring the perceived brightness up with obscuring lens that is in front of the display. So that's a very interesting kind of tech. I once talked with the HoloLens team and they were thinking about it when we're gonna have a bigger FOV by the way, we're gonna talk about more uh, the FOV in a little, uh, where they could consider also to use the HoloLens technology and the holograms technology in a VR environment. How you do it? Well, obscuring at the end what is the outside world and be in a black void where just the holograms are gonna take over all the visual. Now we are very far from that, but this is a first example of this idea being used in a real headset. So that's very, very interesting for sure. Now this AR headset uses a custom processor system on the chip that's based on Linux and everything is balanced very well to have a 50-50 balance of the weight that makes this stuff much better to wear. And we know that because of the Oculus Quest, right? And are also highlighting how important is the audio over here because they're able to receive the audio for the external and process all together with the system on the chip to then give a positional tracking to the audio to make it more realistic, more realistic feeling. Now, Sony is very famous to talk about the audio for a long, long time. Uh, we saw it in the PS5 spec review. Uh, and well, probably something that will bring it over, over here because audio at the end of the day is a very big thing when it comes to AR or VR because feeling immersed, knowing there's an hologram over there, well, it's also, you know, all the sense together. So you have to see, but you also have to listen to it and understand where the sound of that object, of that 
character is coming from. So that's very, very nice. Now, understanding the external audio is also very important because this experience is a multiplayer experience and that means that you have four people around and these four people has to see the exact same thing at the same time with the same sound and everything. So everything has to be synchronized and the latency has to be brought like to the minimum level possible. And that's where there are little problems for Sony. Because they're trying to bring the latency down as much as possible, now it's around 30 and 40 milliseconds, and that means that when you move around and you have to keep the latency the same for all the different headsets, well, these holograms will move a little. They're not gonna be really stable in the spot where they should be. And so there's something that they're trying to solve using time warp. For example, there is a technology that is used in VR uh, to make the latency much, much lower. We know that a good latency for VR is around the two milliseconds, so they're still kind of far uh, from that threshold. But Mukawa himself said that that's the most important thing because they really have to bring the latency down as much as possible to make that immersion feel like regular. Also, we have to notice, by the way, that AR is not as sensible to latency as VR, because in VR, being completely immersed, if something just feels off, well, you're gonna have some uh, real struggle and uh, motion sickness. Instead, in AR, because you're anchored still to the real world, well, the latency doesn't really give you that, like, Kind of queasy situation. But now let's get to the second problem. There's something that every AR headset unfortunately share and that's the FOV, the field of view, because it's still a little limited. We don't have many pictures about it through the lenses with these AR headset. We have just two, but in those two you can already see there's something off that the image is just cut off from the visual of the camera and what the display is actually showing us. Because, well, the ray that is arriving is not complete. That's because the FOV is still not big enough. We know that in HoloLens 2, we had a big expansion with this waveguide technology of the FOV. We're around 50 degrees diagonal, but it's still not enough. Consider that VR is around 90, 110 degrees, or 130 with the index, or 170 with the Pimax. But even 170 is just not wide enough because our real view is 210 degrees. So you really have to make it much, much wider to have a great immersion. And it's something that unfortunately is still missing and it's something that AR still have to solve. Now, for sure, we're gonna start to see the first AR headset with a very contained AR FOV because at the end of the day, it's not the most important thing. Again, you don't get motion sickness, but it really breaks the immersion. So it's something that they still have to solve in Sony and it's nothing new to Sony, it's nothing new to any other company. And I feel that we're gonna have to live a little with it, at least for now, at the beginning. Now, I really think that these AR headset look awesome. I really hope they're gonna bring it around the world and not just in Tokyo, in Japan, uh, because we really want to experience something similar. And I think that it's very interesting that they're actually showing it with the Ghostbuster, for example. It should be very, very fun to play. And from the marketing material, well, it looks pretty, pretty cool. But let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Are you ready for an AR headset from the consumer use? Or would you consider it if the price would be like under $400, like a Quest, for example. Here we have still a standalone headset, so you have to take in consideration the cost of battery, the cost of cameras, the cost of, of course, the processors and the memory and the display and stuff like that. So everything is contained in there. But if you can really keep the price down, probably we can have a glimpse of what could be the next generation leap. But let me know what you think about it in the comment below. And as always, guys, if you like the video, like really helps and helps to bring more of this deep dive and deck. If you didn't like the video, dislike, it's fine. Subscribe to the channel for more about VR tech and I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.